And people in the southeast are getting ready for the storm and our team has you covered the effects in Florida already this morning and the local preparations before we see the bigger effect coming to our state. And happening now in the WRO Traffic Center, we're following some breaking news this morning, a crash uh, causing quite a bit of delay on I-40 and Lake Wheeler Road. We'll tell you how long this is going to add to your commute and an alternate route to get around it. And Team USA builds on their first place lead as superstar Simone Biles goes for gold again. We are tracking the day's competition in Paris. Good morning and welcome in on your Monday morning here on Fox 50. I'm Michelle McConaughey. Now I'm Chris Lovingood. We did see that Simone in her last competition though came in what fifth I believe. So yes. not not the ending we wanted there. It's okay. She got a lot of gold. Though, she got a so lot of gold good. though. So something to <laughs> celebrate about. Thanks for yeah. joining us here. I'm Chris Lovingood. Uh, we're going to check a little bit on the weather situation because Debbie has made landfall this morning. You're looking right now at a live image down in Florida as this car is showing you the rain that's hitting that windshield there. So we do want to get into that in just a little bit more. But first, we want to check in with meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner because you have the radar showing us the path right now. So this is where the center of circulation is, and it's moving on shore just west of Gainesville, southeast of Tallahassee. Officially, the center made landfall at around 7 o'clock near Steenhatchee, uh, Florida. Uh, so it continues to move up to the north. Notice how much rain there is out ahead of it. This is pretty typical for tropical systems. A lot of times when the center of circulation moves into an area, uh, we've already seen the worst of it. Um, brand new uh, information at 8 a.m. Winds are now at 75 miles per hour, so just barely hurricane status. Uh, but that will uh, cause some wind issues. Of course, we could see in that live view, it looked like we were probably going to have some trees down on roads there um, as that continues to move off to the north and east. It's moving at about 10 miles per hour and will continue to track across Georgia out into the uh, Atlantic and then back into South Carolina and eventually up into North Carolina. And out ahead of the storm is where we're going to see most of the trouble. It's going to be a very slow mover that's going to allow it to sit in a, a one place and just dump and dump and dump the rain. So for North Carolina, for our viewing area, our northern counties four to eight inches and for Raleigh southward as much as six to ten and that will be over around a three to four day time frame. So um, we're looking at a medium risk for flooding, but it, it could be catastrophic from say Wilmington on down through South Carolina as there could be anywhere from 10 to 20 inches of rain. What we're going to see today this afternoon, just a few isolated storms and the rain bands beginning to affect the Wilmington area. We'll start to see the first rain bands here tomorrow, and then the rain will continue to be very heavy at the coast. Wednesday through Friday will be the days that we end up seeing the heaviest rain here, as well as some 20 to 40 mile per hour gusts. So we have a couple more days to prepare, especially today. We'll start to see some rain bands tomorrow. Now, unrelated to Debbie, we had some showers across the area this morning. So Apex still a little wet this morning. 79 the temperature with a dew point of 74, so very heavy tropical feel to the atmosphere atmosphere, a 20 to 30% chance of some afternoon and evening storms. Our highs this afternoon will be in the upper 80s. That's as warm as it's going to be all week as we transition to such a wet pattern with Debbie. Ken. You're waking up this morning. You're hearing us reporting that uh, Hurricane Debbie made landfall and you're like, well, what does it look like? Inglewood Beach, Florida. Live look right here. You see how dark it is out there. The wind blowing those palm trees there. The rain hitting the lens. This is uh, just south of Tampa, not too far from uh, the Fort Myers area. We've got meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner tracking this very carefully. It's it's very it's kind of spooky to look at that video. I'm not going to lie, Elizabeth. It really is. I saw some video earlier from Fort Myers, of course, which was just destroyed a few years ago. So I was feeling bad for them. Boy, they had flooded roads there in Fort Myers. This system has moved up the coastline, and so the west coast of Florida um, really has been hit hard by all of this as it's uh, continuing to move uh, northward. So it moves into Georgia next to South Carolina and then heads our way, but we'll likely see the worst of this out ahead of the center of circulation, which is pretty typical. So we take a look at the timing of this and you have to kind of look ahead, you know, what's going to be happening. We could see some of the first rain bands here as early as tomorrow. Officially, the center of circulation made landfall around 7 a.m. Um, in Steenhatchee, Florida, which is near the big near the Big Bends, north of uh, Tampa, uh, southwest of Tallahassee. Um, coastal impacts here in North Carolina, at least down in the Wilmington area, are going to begin today with some rain bands. Um, and then we'll start to see some of that Tuesday into Saturday. The biggest threat here is not going to be wind, but flooding. A very slow moving system is easily going to dump as much as four to eight inches, maybe up to 10 inches of rain in parts of our area. Um, it continued at least the eight o'clock advisory.
Advisory to have winds at 75 miles per hour. So parts of Florida still could have some wind issues there. Trees down with those strong winds. It's moving northeast at 10 miles per hour. And we'll start to turn our attention to the amount of rainfall that it dumps. And the reason it's going to dump an unusual amount of rainfall is because it's going to be moving so slowly. So the slower it moves over an area, the longer the time it has to dump that heavy rain. So we won't see the center of circulation until maybe Friday night, but we'll begin to see these rain bands as early as tomorrow. Look at how much of that rain is ahead of the center. So very heavy rain in South Carolina during the day tomorrow, and we'll start to see some rain bands. The Wilmington area um, and areas to our south will really start to see some of that heavy rain tomorrow, but we'll begin to feel some of those rain bands. We watch the storm continuing to move north through. There's Tuesday at lunchtime. Uh, there's Wednesday at five o'clock. We'll just continue to see that heavy rain pushing northward, and it doesn't start to pull out of North Carolina until maybe late on Friday. We could see some lingering impacts easily into Saturday. So why is this moving so slowly? What typically moves tropical systems is the upper level winds, but this storm is cut off from the upper level winds. That's all to our north. So this one's going to wander. Of course, I've showed you the path of the hurricane from the National Hurricane Center, but we have the American model that really just wants to leave it off the coast of South Carolina and then maybe push it back to the west. So um, it's still a bit up in the air in terms of exactly what the storm will do. But looking at four to 10 inches of rainfall in our viewing area, um, maybe as much as a foot and a half in the Wilmington area. So we're easily at a moderate to high risk for flooding for the next few days. What can you do to prepare? Clean out your gutters, mow your grass. You're not going to get to it again um, until maybe sometime next week and anything you might need in case there's flooding at your house. Um, we're nice and quiet right now. We had a few showers earlier in southern Wake County. Those have fizzled. We'll likely have some afternoon showers and thunderstorms, but they'll be isolated at best. Any storms that develop, though, could produce some heavy rain like they did yesterday. It's a bit wet in Apex where we had a shower just about an hour, hour and a half ago. 79 right now, and we'll see temperatures climbing to 89. Our temperatures will be cooler than they were last week because of all the clouds and the rain that we'll end up seeing coming up in a little bit. We'll talk more about some of those heavy rainfall totals. Ken? Yeah, thanks. Let's get you now live a image out in Perry, Florida. This is in the Florida Panhandle. Oh, it's a little bit southeast of Tallahassee, and you'll see here from this car, you see that tree down there as well, and there appears to be a truck on the ground over there to the right as well. It's not quite clear from this angle if the tree is on the vehicle, but this is just showing you what kind of situation is unfolding in Florida as Hurricane Debbie made landfall not long ago. We do have team coverage this morning. WRL's Laura Levine is at Lake Johnson in Raleigh, where North Carolinians are preparing for Debbie. But first, let's start with Michelle McConaughey and the WRL Live Center. What are you tracking? Uh, actually, it's not Michelle. <laughs> hey, it is. <laughs> Chris, th Logan. Chris, thanks. That'd be a neat trick. She's next to you out there. But hey, um, you were showing the Big Bend area, the Panhandle area, Tallahassee. I want to go all the way across the state right here and show you Jacksonville Beach, okay? So this is a live look what's happening right now because as Elizabeth was talking about that rain has pushed out ahead of this and it is potentially record setting rain. Uh, there's flood watches. There is storm surge concerns right now as that rain pushes forward. There are more than 200,000 people in Florida uh, customers without power right now. And instead of when a hurricane comes, they're talking about uh, making sure things are secure that they don't blow away. Folks locally are talking about securing things from floating away now because of all this rain uh, that is happening. Uh, WRL has a crew. Uh, it's going to head south this morning. Again, this is a live look in Jacksonville. We're going to head south this morning, meet up with the storm, and follow it uh, as it moves up the coast. But some of the concerns that we have here locally, Laura Levine is looking into, and there are some things that she's out at Lake Johnson Park. Um, there are some things that folks can do ahead of time, and the city has done to prepare for this. Laura. <laughs> Crews here in Raleigh began preparing for Debbie over the weekend. Heavy rainfall is a major concern in this area. That's exactly why they came out here to begin lowering lake levels at lakes like Lake Johnson. You can see things are nice and quiet, but here's a look at some video giving you an idea of the process. This is from Ethan Clark with the city's stormwater team. He has been working closely with emergency management, and they made the call to proactively lower city lakes. This allows them to store more water and helps reduce flooding concerns along Walnut Creek. Now over on the Carolina coast, we're already seeing the impacts of Debbie. Rough water picking up at Wrightsville Beach where Ocean Rescue is flying those red flags. We need access to the beach. We, we don't want people, you know, going out even knee high. Um, you know, you do go out, you do become in trouble 
um, that's now putting our lifeguards in unnecessary risk to go out and rescue you when, you know, it's been very clear you should not be getting in the ocean. A rip currents also a major concern at this time. Officials say the conditions will likely get worse as the days progress, as North Carolina is directly in Debbie's path. Laura Levine, WREL News in Raleigh. And flash flooding in Raleigh caused a lot of problems for drivers yesterday. Take a look at these videos here. Streets looked more like lakes and rivers with water pooling up and clearing out just as fast. This was the diverging diamond interchange on Western Boulevard. Cars swerved and slowed to avoid sliding on the water that seeped into the road. Meanwhile, this was the side of Saunders Street. A car stalled out in the water there. Crews came out in the rain working to drain it to get the car moving again. And on Cutler Street. Rushing water flowed like a river along a neighborhood road. The water pushed past cars parked in the pavement. And on Hillsborough Street, slick spots and ponding raised the risk for hydroplaning. There was a vehicle stalled in standing water earlier. The rain saturated the ground, bringing a potential for even more flooding and damage. <laughs>